Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Last year at GDC, Microsoft announced DXR or DirectX Ray Tracing. And this year, a year later at GDC, well, Ray Tracing has definitely come to maturity. Pretty much every major player was there with a Ray Tracing demo or announcement. Now the one that kicked off all of the GDC coverage. And the thing that I've been most asked for on this channel that I didn't cover because it really wasn't enough to justify covering it was Crytek's Neon Noir demo. Now this was something they brought out of the blue and this is showing real time ray tracing, but this is on a Vega 56, I believe. Uh, which is not RTX hardware. And that's gonna kind of be a theme of this video actually. Uh, but this is showcasing real-time ray tracing in CryEngine 5 without the need for dedicated hardware, running at a constant 30 frames per second or better. Now the kicker is we don't know any more than this. That's why I haven't really covered it in depth. Also, I'm only showing you a small subset of the actual video. All of the um, demos I'm showcasing today, the full versions with audio, um, the complete versions are available and linked down below. So if you want more details, do check out the link. But this was an impressive video, and I know why so many of you are interested in hearing more about it. And I was waiting for them to release the demo files or something, but sadly, nothing happened. Now, next up, we had NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA was in on the original debut of ray tracing, and they did so with something called Project Sol. Well, they're showcasing more and more of that demonstration in this particular video. So this is showcasing uh, real-time ray tracing on a Titan 2080, I believe it was that they said. And again, NVIDIA is really the heart and soul pusher for hardware-wise of um, the whole ray tracing movement. They brought out an entire series of 20 cars, 2060, 2070, and 2080 around ray tracing, but they've had a bit of a hard sell. So ray tracing hasn't taken off, I don't think quite like they wanted it to. And it's led to an interesting announcement at GDC, which we will cover once we finish getting through all these demos. Now there's no question though, it is pretty. I, all of these things are pretty, but um, the, the part that you have to keep in mind, this is not CGI movies. These are literally being ray traced in real time on modern hardware. High-end hardware, but modern hardware nonetheless. Next up, we have uh, Unity's entry. This is uh, illusion versus reality. It's a bit of a different approach that they took here. Uh, they are actually shooting scenes side by side between a real-time ray traced BMW M3, M3? I think it is. Anyways, a real-time ray traced BMW and um, one that was actually filmed. So they cut between the two to try and determine uh, which one, if you could actually tell what was real and what was not. Now, using CGI and car commercials is nothing new. But once again, this is real-time ray traced. Like, this was being done at the Unity keynote uh, using a razor blade laptop and an RTX card. So this is impressive stuff nonetheless. Now, one thing that kind of is unfortunate about the Unity is they are going to be the latest to the market. This requires the HD render pipeline and the real-time ray tracing stuff isn't going to come until Q3 or Q4 of 2019. So we've got several months to wait before they're a player. Um, and it's probably worth it though, because this is it's impressive stuff and it just slots into the pipeline. So it's not like you have to do any additional work. Finally, we have Unreal Engine's entry here made by Deep Forest Films and Goodbye Kansas. It's an adaptation of the book Troll. Um, it, it's actually, again, the, this video itself doesn't really impress all that much, but the keynote version where they actually jumped in and started moving the lights around in real time, changing the intensity, changing the refraction and stuff. That's when you looked at this and went, Oh, okay, this is real time and this is really adding to the results. Whereas in this case, it kind of just comes across like, you know, yet another CGI. And the kind of bummer on this one is Unreal Engine hit it out of the park last year with their uh, stormtroopers in an elevator. Like that was funny and it really did a good job of showcasing rendering or real time uh, ray tracing. This one's good, like don't get me wrong, especially when you again see them interact with it in real time. But it was probably the one that kind of interested me the least and spoke to me the least of all the demos. Um, you know, it doesn't have the whole gotcha aspect of is this real or fake that the Unity one did. And the um, CryEngine one has the wow factor, especially when you consider the fact that of all of these videos, it is being done on non-dedicated hardware. But we're going to get back to that in just a second because um, that's kind of probably the biggest news that came out of GDC. Uh, is that that whole hardware thing isn't quite the requirement it used to be. So let's take a look at that now. 
So to start things off, here we are with a blog post from GeForce. It was posted up at the beginning of GDC on March the 18th. And there is a lot in this. I'm not gonna go through it at all for the most part. Um, it's kind of an explanation of the underlying hardware, the technology behind ray tracing and all of that stuff. It's a thick read. It could take up 20 minutes of the video and I'm not gonna bother getting into it. What I am gonna do though is remind you back a year ago when Microsoft announced DirectX ray tracing, they actually implemented reference hardware that allowed it to run on today's hardware. It would run slowly, but it's always been capable of running on any kind of hardware. Well, the entire sales pitch for the RTX series of cards, the 2060, uh, 2070, and 2080, was 100% about ray tracing. And ray tracing hasn't really been a huge seller as of yet. Now, it's been in some games, you can see they're highlighted here. Uh, Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Battlefield 5, um, Port Royale, those are the uh, top level titles that are enabling ray trace, but there's a huge GPU hit for doing it. Well, the interesting thing that they've done, and this is going to help push developer adoption, which in turn will help sell ray tracing cards. You run into a chicken and egg scenario there. No ray tracing games. Why the heck do I want these things? Why would I bother? And then you've got developers in there going, why am I going to put resources into ray tracing when nobody has the cards? So you run into, again, a chicken and egg scenario, and you could end up with ray tracing being a bit of a lame duck. Well, what they've announced is that coming next month, so coming in April, they're going to be shipping a set of GeForce drivers that enables ray tracing on all of these cards. So the 1080, the 1070, and the 1060 are all going to get ray tracing capability, as well as the recently released 1060, 10, sorry, 1660 card as well. So ray tracing is going to be available on a whole lot more video cards. Now the kicker is it's not as complete. So you're seeing here basic ray trace and low ray counts. Over here, complex ray trace, multiple ray trace effects, high ray count. So you're not gonna get the same fidelity or quality, but you'll now be able to use ray tracing selectively on older generation cards. So you can have uh, reflections on a scene where it makes sense. And another area where, you know, competitive shooters, people are not gonna turn ray tracing on on either of the cards. But if you're playing a, an adventure game and you've got your 1080 running at, you know, 110 frames per second, well, those are wasted, especially if you're on a 60 hertz monitor. So if you can turn on some RTX effects and have it make the game look a little bit better at the 60 frames per second rate that you benefit by getting a better fidelity picture because you're using some of the core and some of the power for ray tracing, well, that's a convenient and, and good offering. And then what you've got basically is then NVIDIA can sit there and go, oh, and you can slide this up and make it look even better if you buy our new, more modern cards. This is the approach they should have taken from day one. And I think a lot of people are feeling a little scammed by the fact that, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't need this new hardware to do ray tracing. And you never did. That was part of DXR. Now to do it efficiently, maybe. So it's going to be interesting to see now that ray tracing is going to be coming to this generation, or I guess last generation's cards as well as the new cards, are we going to see it more adopted by games? And therefore, is there going to be more demand for ray tracing in the future? Interesting to see. And I think in some ways, this is the biggest announcement out of the whole thing. Now, the funny thing is the fact that uh, Crytek came out with their demo with no ray tracing hardware at all, and kind of pushed this even more. So it's, it's interesting to see where things ended out there, and it'll be interesting to see how it affects NVIDIA sales in the end. So I've also got um, the web pages here. I will link all these down below, but every single thing we just saw, there is more detail to it, there's more sound to it, and I will link these as well. So for example, this is Crytek's uh, description of their engine. There is more detail available. Check below for this link, or the link containing this link. Uh, also, in terms of when is this stuff available, uh, Crytek, no further details. Uh, the reason why I'm linking to this post here for Unreal Engine is because uh, about two or three weeks ago, Unreal actually released 422 Preview, which turned on RTX ray tracing. So it's there. If you want to check it out with Unreal Engine, you can. And then in terms of, oh, and the uh, the final version of uh, 4.22 is supposedly coming uh, next week. So uh, early April, keep an eye out for that. Um, and then we've got Unity. They do an explanation of their uh, reality versus illusion. You can get the full video here as well. And it wasn't a three series, it was an eight series. Okay, my apologies there. And they've, they're, again, a bit further away, uh, will be available in 2019. And that's actually in the full preview, preview version coming in HDRP or the high definition render pipeline in fall of 2019. So they're gonna be the slowest uh, to the to the take up here, unfortunately. Now the nice thing is between um, the workflows of Unity and Unreal Engine from what I saw, 
there's not a whole lot more work to be done from the game producers. It's kind of a, a turn on, turn off sort of feature. So you can easily support a ray trace path and a non ray trace path in a game. It shouldn't create a whole lot more work to start creating ray trace titles the way that they have done things. Anyways, that is it. That is ray tracing at GDC 2019. Some really exciting stuff. I do like that it's being opened up to more devices. I think it will lead to better adoption, even if it's just being used for, say, spell effects for now in a game or, um, you know, just selectively turned on and off. I think that's the approach they should have taken from day one. And if anything, um, Crytek just showed us yeah, you don't need this fancy hardware to make this stuff work. And now, on the same side, they also never released the demo for us to play with, so who knows if that was all smoke and mirrors. So that was it. That was uh, Real-Time Ray Tracing, GDC 2019. Hope you guys found it interesting. Let me know what you think, especially what you think about NVIDIA turning Ray Tracing on for last-generation cards. It's an interesting move, and I know it has pissed some people right off, thinking that the whole RTX generation is a scam. Um, I don't feel that. I, I just think they made a strategic blunder with the way they rolled it out. Um, but I would love to hear what you opinions are. And that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.